team uh, back here with me. I hope everyone is faring well. I know this information is incredibly intense, particularly if you're new to it. I'm sure the ones here are familiar at least to a degree with these concepts. So we're going to move on with the second part. And once again, these are reasonably intangible concepts, but at the same time, very relatable and very powerful. All right, so pathway number one. Now, consistent with what we've just gone over, this of course has to do with what is referred to as direct light accretion. Now, as, as you know, from what I've just described here with the process of dimensional ascension, if you're down here in your ego, well, as you assimilate the energies of the fourth dimensional band, which happens gradually, now this is an increase in vibratory rate. The oscillation rate is increasing as we move up the vibrational scale. So that to hold this energy as a frequency within yourself is more challenging than this one, right? But that is ultimately how it works, is that you are bringing in light from the fourth dimension. The DNA is going to activate, and the heart chakra is going to activate. Consequently, your consciousness expands to perceive directly the awareness that is contained within these dimensional bands, right? That's, that's how dimensional ascension takes place. So consistent with that, of course, absolutely, fundamentally, we need to directly accrete the light associated with these fields of energy. Now, the most uh, powerful way that I've come across to achieve this is through what is known as Kriya Pranayama, right? Um, some people know this as Kundalini Pranayama in the yogic tradition. And so I learned this technique from the very first time I learned it was from a master called Marshall Govindan. And he is an incredible master. This is another master called Pramansa Pragyananda. And both of these masters are really uh, great leaders in the field of yoga, uh, self-realization, God-realization, and certainly in the knowledge of how to actually directly accrete light within the body, most effectively done through this, what is referred to as Kriya Pranayama, right? Now, both of these masters are Babaji associated, right? Oh, I'm getting one step ahead. No, I'm not. So Babaji, as you'll remember, is the, the master I referred to, the guardian associated with the earth environment, right? So it would be foolish to think that Babaji is any less aware than any of these guardians. That's not the case. A guardian is a master or being that holds a level of mind that is, you know, at least here within the Rishi cosmic field, at least here, sorry. Um, an avatar is certainly a guardian, but generally, of course, the avatar mind moves into the Rishi, solar Rishi and ascended frequency fields and can hold that level of frequency within their body. So that Babaji, for example, people that have met him have noticed that he does not cast a shadow on the ground. And that is because, similar to if you were to hold up a candle flame against the wall, what you'd notice is that if there's a light behind it or coming from the ceiling, the flame itself doesn't cast a shadow. Now, that would make logical sense, wouldn't it? that light does not cast a shadow because it's light. But it's actually amazing to actually recognize that. It's like, wow, it doesn't cast a shadow. So Mahavadar Babaji doesn't cast a shadow and other avatars uh, such as Ananda Mai Ma, I'm not sure if you would be familiar with this master. I don't have a picture. It's just coming as a reference now to mind. It was a great, beautiful woman master, um, Indian master, that, um, hmm, now, who was it that told this story? It was uh, oh, the great master that runs the Hamsa Yoga, Gurunath, Satgurunath, uh, I, forget his, I forget his name now, but, you know, tassels of white hair, looks like, basically looks like what you'd imagine God looks like. 
um, I'm sure one of you will probably be familiar, but he had an experience with this Ananda Mahima where he went and sat, uh, it's Gurunath, Gurunath Siddhanath, sorry, if you want to look up that, Hamsa Yoga is his thing. He went an experience where he sat outside the house of this Nanda Mai Ma, which was a recent, I think, 19th century avatar. And he sat outside her house and he would not go until she came out. And so he went, she made him, of course, wait a day or two. And then she came outside and she said, you, you know, you stubborn, naughty child. And um, sort of semi scolded him for being so stubborn in any case. She came and stepped and stood right in front of him as he sat there. And the usual Indian tradition is to touch the feet of these great masters because the feet, of course, is the symbology of well, where have they stepped? Where has their pathway been? Because I want to follow that if I want to learn this knowledge, right? So he went to touch her feet and his hands went straight through her feet and touched the ground. In other words, her body, what was she was revealing to him was a hologram. It was, in other words, it was a light being. She's a light being. So that's what an avatar is. Now, Babaji is actually a Mahavatar. He has actually brought many other beings into the status of avatar as well. So he's like a, <laughs> a level above, right? So anyway, this is Babaji. And um, this being is associated with these two masters, Marshal Govindan and Paramatsa Pragyananda, who are both God-realized beings, which means that they have expanded their consciousness all the way up the dimensional scale and merged with that field of vibration, uh, the sound fields, the arm vibratory word, as it were, that were those, what was the initial formation, right? The initial formation of energy within creation and gone beyond that to consciousness itself or awareness that is existing beyond all forms of energy, which is what you would refer to as this God, right, or prime creator or the source of life and everything and all that is in the universe and all creation. So that they are referred to as God realized masters. They understand themselves to be that. So this is where they learned it from. And I learned it from one of Marshall Govindan's teachers, uh, that was Yogini Rohini, when she actually she was doing a retreat in Byron Bay, and I went up there and learned from her. Uh, Paramahansa Pragyananda came to Sydney at one point. I got initiated, so that was the foundation of my learning of this Kriya Pranayama. Now, of course, these two are associated with Paramahansa Yogananda, and he talks about Babaji in this book, right? Uh, Pragyananda is down further from the lineage. If we have Yogananda, then the next down in the official, we could say, Kriya Yoga lineage, at least one that is well respected to be official, is this one's guru, Paramahansa Hariharinanda. I don't have a picture here. And then there is him, of course. So it's step one, step two, step three. And that is coming down directly from Mahavata Babaji and the people that he trained into avatar status. So in other words, it's a pretty uh, effective technique, right? So another person that I've learned from is this man, uh, Chi Master Yang. And I learned what is referred to Gong, which actually refers to, this translate as inner work. Now Kriya, this relates to in Sanskrit as action, right? Um, Pranayama refers to the life force energy uh, within you that is going to be moving inside of you, right? Because Kriya is action. So the life force energy, Pranayama is a particular way to move that energy. And in this particular technique, it moves around your chakra system and magnetizes your chakras. And that is what is referred to as, and again, I don't have a picture of uh, Master Mantak Chia, is a very well-known Nagong master. He refers to as the microcosmic orbit. That's a very familiar pattern that is actually synonymous with Kriya Yoga, right? And the way they approach this. Now, Nagong, as I learned from Master Yang, is simply the direct light assimilation of this life force, this vitality, these higher dimensional frequency bands. So I learned this 
from Chi Master Yang, and he of course taught me a lot more about how to wield that energy. Now, I'm not sure about this, but Nagong has been traditionally associated with this is what is a master called Lao Tzu or Lao Tzu. Now, interestingly enough, now I don't know if certainly this is not Master Yang's guru here, Lao Tzu or Lao Tzu, but he was the founder of Taoism, of course, and um, basically well known associated with Nagong, which refers to inner work. Same thing, right? inner work referring to the movement of the vital life force of the light within your being now i don't know if he's obviously not the direct uh master of grandmaster yang but i would say that his teachers are of the lineage of lao tzu or some other closely associated master because it all really comes back from the same source now interestingly enough what we have is a direct connection between these two and this being here known as Rishi, Solar Rishi Bhaganatha, who is said to be thousands of years old. He is still inhabits the earth but exists on the astral plane. In other words, he doesn't reside on the physical plane anymore, such as Babaji still does. He still retains a physical body that's confirmed to us through the autobiography of a yogi. But um, Sita uh, Bhaganatha exists in one of those higher echelons of frequency that we were just talking about now it's said that he is the gyan avatar guru of uh, babaji in other words he is the wisdom guru of babaji and he is also said to actually be lao tzu he was said to have picked up through his psychokinetic power um, a past an asian body that had passed and revitalized it and actually gone forth and done the teaching associated with Lao Tzu, which of course uh, has become very, very famous, right? Uh, imagine that, how powerful he is, right? Like a psychic being just picks up this dead body and revitalizes it and then goes forth and does this teaching. You can research that if you want, uh, if you want to learn more about that. But isn't that fascinating? But that gives you a bit of a rundown as to what this technique is. Uh, where its history is, where it's come from, its etymology, we could say, right? Now, that is something that I go over, I, I describe in the lightning path, right? It is, the, it is a bridging of those two different techniques, the Nagong and the Kriya Pranayama, and the reason that I sort of merged that into a more simplified technique was so that it was easier for the general population to use nevertheless it is still ultimately just as vital and powerful because once you have that flow of prana or light flowing within your body through what is called your central vertical current well you can direct it in any way that you want you can direct it around the microcosmic orbit you can direct it straight into your third eye and breathe it out into your energy field for the purposes of manifestation if you want to focus it out through your hands when I'm giving a hands-on healing, for example, this is how it goes. I focus on the source of life and those primal light uh, force currents and the primal light fields. And I, my intention is that those energy currents will flow through me. And as I do that, the energy flows up through my feet. Even now, my feet feel like they're burning. It's like uh, they are standing on hot sand or something. My crown is ablaze with a halo of light i can feel that like it's a, a white a light hat or something on the top of my head and so that energy converges through from the merging of heaven and earth which is a taoist theme isn't it um so in other words the heaven frequencies the stellar the star frequencies are merging with we could say the feng shui of the earth energy frequencies they are moving up through the heart my heart begins to glow and i can direct that like a sun from inside of my chest out through my arms and through my palms into the person that i have my hands on so i'm not claiming to be like a miracle healer or anything that's just the way that i orchestrate a hands-on healing and it's um it's a natural we could say osmotic effect i don't intend that i'm healing anyone it's just the way that that happens that I let that higher awareness flow and energy flow and create if a healing effect is created well it's created 
If it's not, then it's not. It's not really up to me. So in other words, once you have that energy flowing within your system, there are a lot of different things that you can do. Another thing that you can do is that you can charge your energy body. Um, how are we going for time? <laughs> Let me just check here. So um, I'll include a few more stories, perhaps just to uh, provide a bit more depth to what I'm speaking of and as it relates to my personal experience. But um, once I was meditating, uh, if you can say meditating, I don't like using that word. I would rather say I was accreting light through this process of Krina Pranayama, direct light accretion or nekon. Um, and so that my whole body was vibrating. And when that happens, the light flows into my head. My br I can feel my brain like swimming. My whole body is literally boiling with this current that is so much hotter than you'd ever be through, I don't know, a steam room or whatever. But And yet it's not uncomfortable that the whole body's melting in this river of flowing light that merges with the cosmic ocean. And that on this particular occasion, now this was probably 2014, um, it was amazing because I just, I was sitting there on the edge of the couch and I just, I just leaned back. I was like, I feel tired. And I, le I leant back. Now, the moment that I laid my head back onto the couch, immediately I was projected out of my body so that, um, now this, I don't think this was a, it wasn't a bilocation, like I wasn't projecting physically out of my body, but again, the astral body immediately projected because it was charged right so that you um, you won't be confined by your physical body all of the time if you can do this you can charge your body with energy and you can immediately at the speed of light travel to a distant location which is called astral projection isn't it but that when you do this and at least on this case it was organized by what i will have to assume is either buddha or a similar consciousness because I immediately found myself, and I think this is the first time I've retold this story uh, on a webinar, but I immediately found myself in this kind of hatched um, hut of old wood and reeds. It was like this really rough hut, but I imagined that I was somewhere in Tibet. Uh, it was cold outside. I, there was mountains, a mountainous terrain outside. But inside it was warm and there was a, like a little kitchen out the back and there was just this little humble table and there was uh, another person just eating noodles with the chopsticks. And anyway, I ordered, I thought, well, I'm going to order some food. <laughs> so I ordered the food and whilst the food was, um, I don't know, cooking as it were, being prepared, there was this reverberating image of one uh, the image, the classical image of the Buddha, the statue, in my third eye. So I was like, okay, well, this Buddha is reverberating my third eye. And also, following that, the Dalai Lama's face, the current Dalai Lama's face, then the image of his face started reverberating in my third eye. And I'm just sitting in this humble hut, right, just waiting for my food in the astral field, as every day as that might seem. And um, so I sort of got this notion, okay, so this is... This is something to do with Buddha or Buddhist communication here. Now, here's me thinking, oh, this is a pretty cool experience. Literally, I don't know, this was a very humbling experience because previous to that, the amount of energy that was flowing through my body, um, and this is what, uh, six or seven years ago now, isn't it? But I had perceived it to be the Kundalini. You know, people talk about the Kundalini. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. So when the food arrived, I took the first drink of this fluid of soup with the noodles. And wow. So as soon as I took that first drink, this, we could say, it's like a fire started burning at the base of my sacrum, uh, the base chakra, the coccyx and started to move up through my chakra system and it was so intense that the thing that i can remember associating with was like this is this is what it must be like when a lady's giving birth right because 
and I don't, yeah, I don't have the audacity to know what that's like in terms of the pain, but the intensity of it in terms of the scorching, searing heat, though it wasn't damaging me as it moved upwardly, was causing me to breathe like going. <sighs> now, I was breathing like that, but that was my way of coping with the intensity of it, right? So next moment, anyway, following that, I snapped back into the physical abruptly sit up at the couch in my Artaman residence, wasn't my residence at the time, well alert and just, you know, almost, um, what's the word for it, you know, pretty, pretty shocked and stunned. So, yeah, at that point I realized, no, Kundalini Shakti, the primal life force currents emanating from those primal light fields, that is the highest frequency field of light energy emanating through the universe. It's a higher frequency than most people realize, right? So that's one little story for you. Now, shortcut tip to achieving, achieving this, as it were. Um, now, be consistent. First of all, learn your practice. Second of all, be consistent. And I always tell my students and encourage them again and again and again, I'm like a broken record, every morning and every night, when you make this the most important thing to you, that you get up and it's the first thing that you do, and I have to confess I'm a hypocrite at times, like I'll grab the phone and look at it, what's the time, and then I might see a message is there and I'll look at a message sometimes, but I've got to break that habit and always go straight into meditation because I'm really, in that moment, um, I'm really, I'm putting the connection with the source of life in this process second, aren't I? I'm really saying, uh, my schedule, keeping up with the daily events is more important. So as I'm saying this and being open and transparent and um, humbling myself, I have to remind myself, no, keep coming back and making that the first thing that you do. Now, in the evenings, I like to tone it back as well and move into a consistent flow of building that energy. Some people, if they're just beginning with their practice, might, I don't know, it'd be great if you could do 20 minutes, 30 minutes a night. Whereas, you know, my practice just, time just moves and I'll keep going. So I'll do at least two hours in the morning. It it's really needs to be three. Um, I'll practice through the day, particularly if I'm sitting down, if I'm with others, I can practice depending on how much external attention is required. Um, but I'm practicing 24 seven as much as I can. As the evening arrives, I'm slowing down, my attention's moving inward. And again, I'm gonna hope to get at least a couple of hours in where particularly the last part of it is entirely inwardly focused to the to the uh, the rejection as much as they don't like that word of the external sensory world so my my flame of life vitality is entirely directed back inwardly toward the source of life within me so likened to water rushing down a river the more that you direct your life current through the practice of kriya pranayama you will strengthen the connection with the source of life. You will expand and activate your DNA, attain those higher levels of awareness and increasingly become more self-realized or God-realized, become an embodiment on the earth, which is called an avatar, right? You'll have those powers uh, that will naturally manifest in your experience. So, um, interesting, hey? You can see why I call that pathway number one, right? So pathway number two, uh, is now energy cultivation. So notice I'm breaking this up here. Uh, the previous pathway I'd referred to as direct light accretion. In other words, you are bringing vitality into your body directly through the agency of your willpower, through the most powerful technique known throughout history and all avatars that ever attained God realization knew and understood this it has been referred to as the lightning path, right? So pathway number two, let's say that you've filled up your cup, your vessel, your bucket, and you are full of energy. Well, you've got to go then into the world, don't you? So this is something that I go into in the energy management elemental balancing program. Um, this is one of the programs on the website. You can read more into that if you wish, if you're interested. But what this ultimately means is that you can you can bring all the energy and vitality into your body and system as you like 
But if you don't have the skills, particularly on the mental level, on the emotional level, and the higher levels of awareness through which you have cultivated wisdom as to where to direct your energy and where not to direct your energy, then you're going to be like a bucket that has holes in it. Your vitality is going to drain into the environment, and I'm sure everybody can relate to the experience of being drained by the environment. Now, I'm certainly not sitting here saying that I've mastered this. I find the environment very draining, to be honest. And I feel a little bit like uh, you know, a bun that's just come out of the oven and being placed straight in the fridge sometimes when I go out into the, the general environment. And um, you know that, that's just going to be the case to a degree through the processes of osmosis because the external reality field, as your energy field grows in power, will liken to a hot bun coming out of the oven. The moment that you exit the oven and enter the lower vibrating field, we could say, of the outer environment, you're going to start to cool down. Um, and if you go into a really shitty area, like, I don't know, a pub or a club or something where people are drinking and there's all sorts of discarnate entities sucking life force off them and they're all competing with each other and being crazed on their drugged out journeys to you know ways of propping themselves up well man you're going to be like a hot bun in the fridge right you're going to really get drained so i ultimately don't think that we are a victim to the environment uh, i don't know how to completely overcome that draining factor at this stage entirely i have noted before in one of the retreats with Paramahansa Pragyan and the current head of Kriya Yoga Organization International is that I saw him walk out <clears throat> and this is a God-realized master and the moment I saw him I immediately saw his fatigue and I was like oh my god and I my heart almost broke I thought I felt guilty for being there I was like how can I be part of this <laughs> how can I drain him you know and it's not that um it's not that he's victimized by that. This is the pathway of a master. Uh, if you want to serve on that level, then you have to be willing to surrender to, serve, to serving the population through which you know your cup runneth over and that abundant supply of energy, that life force, that radiant sun within your heart lets flow freely to assist others to achieve that regenerative process through which they also can ignite the candle of flame within their hearts and regenerate their own systems and move through that process of biological regeneration and ascension that I've just been referring to. But in any case, I'm referring to a higher level of skill there. I'm referring to the light levels, uh, the etherical level of management. But as it relates to the elements, this is something that you can learn to pretty much master really, really well, right? So this is my shortcut, uh, shortcut tip for this element the elemental currents that is in particular relation to your lower four chakras your base chakra the second the third and the fourth is that if you attune to your feeling state instead of thinking so much all of the time if you give more attention to your feeling state you will immediately become aware when you are losing vitality you will immediately become aware when you are making we could say foolish choices. Say, for example, you make a dietary choice um, that's not going to support the elevation of the frequency of your body. It might be a low vibratory food. They classify this in the Indian system, don't they? Uh, they classify food as positive pranic, negative pranic, and neutral pranic food. It's a very, very smart way to approach it. Ayurveda, right? And um, so either you're adding to your vitality or you're detracting from it. It really needs to be that simple. But you know what? You can't logically go and look at something and go, hmm, um, I looked at my book and according to the numbers in the columns on the left, it says that um, the zucchini is going to be good for me. Well, you know what? You don't know until you try it and you taste it and you pay particular attention to your body and how it responds to that. Now, at a different level, and this is this is my experience, um, I just know straight away, and it's kind of annoying because sometimes you want to be naughty <laughs> and have something, you know, for God's sakes, life's challenging, isn't it? So you want to have something, you know, bugger it, or have some chocolate, whatever, but you know what, I focus, the other day, just literally two days, days ago, I was meditating. Now, I don't know how this came into my mind, but it popped into my mind. I really like those, I've enjoyed those uh, cheese, 
triangle uh, nacho crackers, right? Sorry for poisoning your mind currently. <laughs> um, but I really love that. But anyway, that popped into my mind, but I was meditating, so I was so attuned with it. So guess what I get? Immediate pain on the side in the field of my liver, where my liver has gone to the future time space variable through which I've consumed it, assimilated the experience, found that it's actually detracted from the energy of the liver, but the liver being the trash keeper that cleans up the body. It's gone, no, bugger you, get stuffed. We're not going to have it. We're going to give you the pain right now so that you have a second think about it. So I get this all the time, right? But um, it, so you have to become more attuned, then, of course, making a decision that is in alignment with your health is going to be a much, uh, much easier thing to do. But until then, at least a psychological understanding and a philosophical view, which is contained within the Elemental Balancing Program, is very helpful because you can go through the lists in a strategic way and go, yes, 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 no, 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 and look at what applies to you on the various levels. And once you master that and understand where your energy leaks are, then you'll be able to hold your frequency higher and you will, of course, be able to attain to that higher expansion through which ultimately you can attain high level of empowerment, freedom, and liberation, right? So pathway three. Whoa. <clears throat> How are we going? 551. And um, we're getting through it. So pathway three. Truth seeking, right? Now don't, <clears throat> don't underestimate the power of this one. Now, I'm well aware that I'm preaching to the choir here, but I want to uh, put these forth for anyone at any level so that they can grasp these fundamental, what I perceived are among the most powerful things that you can do to accelerate this process most rapidly, right? So uh, in my experience, for example, this was the first thing that came across my experience, The Secret. It was a movie, a DVD. Someone gave it to me. And coming out of an ego mind, I kind of had my own experience at that point in time where I, it kind of worked out like, oh, you know, I'm focused on something. And then somehow, you know, an opportunity sort of pops up in my experience. And then it's like, oh my God, what a surprise that was. It's this coincidence occurs. So I kind of had my own philosophy about life that, you know, whatever you focus upon, um, magically kind of starts to come into your experience. And I, you know, I hadn't talked to anyone about it because I'd think I was a crazy person, of course. And it was, it's kind of like a magical idea, isn't it? But when I saw this movie, oh, that was the first time I sort of realized, I think this is back 2005. Wow, hey, someone else actually thinks like this. And it's not just my idea. Um, it's a thing, you know, this is oh, it's a secret. <laughs> anyway, so I'm not going to go into great detail with all of the influences that have uh, come across my experience. I'll, fl I'll flick through a few things just for a laugh. So Ramtha, the white book. Uh, came into my pathway an Ascended Master who literally speaks through a channel called Jay-Z Knight. He speaks through the body. She's absolutely gone. In other words, he takes possession of the body. That might freak some people out depending on their religious beliefs, but it's actually a, a benevolent um, brother of the Rishi, an avatar lineage uh, that is with the white and violet robes that he wears when he is seen of the Violet and White Order, the Great White Brotherhood, in other words, and Rishi, Violet Brotherhood, of the Avatar and Rishi lineages, which is the lineage that I always invoke before my healing sessions, by the way. His uh, communication through this book was incredible for me, you know, and that really expanded me. Uh, I've listened to, I've got so many of the DVDs from the school of, there's another one, the Beginner's Guide to Creating Reality, how we can focus light through the frontal lobe to manifest exactly what we're wanting to experience. Um, I went to the school, they teach you how to develop your psychic powers and manifestation abilities and to ultimately become su in such a way that you are in control of your future, you're not victimized, right? So these are some of the pathways through which I wanted to know the truth. I didn't care uh, how popular they were, all I cared was that internally this resonated and it was fascinated and it electrified me, you know, and so, of course, Idol Biography of a Yogi is in there. Um, I've spoken about that, the Bhagavad Gita, as per uh, Yogananda, and of course, the Second Coming of Christ. These are incredibly profound literatures that I have 
yet to come anywhere close to assimilating the full meaning of, but ultimately is, uh, if you wanted to explain, this will give you every detail, the, the pathway back home, we could say, now the voyages I've already talked about, the transmission from the Guardian Alliance, from the highest harmonics of this universe, and explaining our universal construct that we went through initially, particularly voyages number two, speaks to history in such a way that you would read over it and just there is no way that any rational person could look over this information and go oh someone made that up so I, <laughs> good luck like oh my god if if you can make that up i'm going to come and sit at your feet and hear what you have to say because you are a genius extraordinaire if you can come up with that but um you know that's not sufficient to really even say because no one no one could come up with that. Uh, the precision of the mechanics and the explanations as to how ma uh, reality manifests. I made a very, very simplified overview when I went over that initially, but my God, this goes into complexity extraordinaire, as I say, and um, the entire history of humanity and uh, everything right forward, everything mysterious there ever was, from the pyramids to the Easter Island standing stones, the heart project to uh, secret societies to 9-11 and um, you know many more things that you would have never have heard of uh, Jesus of course the Buddha uh, Krishna the Syrian blues Maparata everything all of history is detailed in that and um, yeah again I'm not going to go on and on but I, just, I do feel passionately that's in a very remarkable and this is one scripture that you could say is unique. There is nothing like it. So I also went and looked over and learned about the Kathara Bio-Spiritual Healing System, Level 1 Certification Program. That was also from Ashiana Dean, through which I you know, got a greater understanding about mechanics of Kathara, which is light, sound, and vibration, and the way that that is utilized in the healing process. And communication bringers of dawn this was a pleiadian transmission by barbara masiniak i love the pleiadians and each one's of these just examples of this many books that i haven't depicted here these are just ones that came to mind barbara help uh hand Clow, the pleiadians loved it syrian channeling from patricia corey uh incredible communications from the syrians and the syrian council a number of those again i'm just depicting a couple here there was many more that i looked over and loved the operation terror material from the alleged uh, hosts of heaven i there's three of those books there's a couple i the collected works was i could not put these down you know i just was so enraptured you can find these online by the way go to operation terror.com but all of these are examples of my journey through truth seeking i didn't care what anyone said all i cared about was what resonated within me what i was being guided to learn about and of course i went through the various um, physical the incarnate human teachers as it were uh, dr joe's dispenser evolve your brain i went to a workshop one amazing thing that happened i was at front of a school of enlightenment i was in a seminar and they were talking about the brain and i thought oh wow i'd really love to learn more about the brain anyway of course they're teaching you about how you whatever you're holding your frontal lobe you're going to manifest right and we learned about that there it is all the people in the field weren't working that out directly through the field that's one of the techniques that they use in the uh, the school there anyway so i've just had this lecture about the brain i really love to learn about the brain meanwhile i'm dreaming away thinking about the lecture i'm walking across the field this is at this university um, and i'm one of those states where you don't even know that you walked from A to B because you just weren't even there. You were in your own mind, right? So in other words, I'm in an analogical state of mind, revisiting the lecture that I've just been through about create your brain, uh, sorry, create your reality and use your brain. And um, I'm thinking, I would love to learn more about the brain. Now, get this. I arrive to the other side of the field and someone hands me a pamphlet, a flyer. Now, the flyer is an invitation to Dr. Joe Suspenza's workshop next week the next weekend in sydney and the title was called evolve your brain <laughs> so that this for example is the truth that i am talking about when you 
turn not only this theory and philosophy into direct experience that you know you know beyond doubt that this philosophy is true and real and works and is the basis of life now you become a realized being you become someone that is authentically understands they are not a philosopher they are not an academic that would teach in a college and read books and relay information from other so-called authorities but they are an authority unto themselves right and i i certainly don't claim to be in any authority whatsoever but i am the authority of my own life and i can share what is true and that is what i do right irrespective of how people take that so uh, byron katie was another teacher that i loved you know what a beautiful teaching that is um, which is simply challenging you to reflect on what you think you know and and is it really the world that's upsetting you or could it be just the way that you're seeing things and it's one of the most powerful revelations that you can ever have because then you would never become a victim ever again when you realize that you were only given your power away because you you chose to remain on the mental plane and you were so stubborn that you uh, would not allow your mind to bend right to become what edward de bono says water logic you wanted to be the rock logic you wanted it to be no i'm right you're wrong the world's wrong and therefore i'm a victim maybe not hey eh? maybe not maybe it was the way that we were seeing things so that when we talk about this sort of philosophy we can certainly understand that wow we have a lot to learn don't we i mean i'm just talking about a few things and i've brushed past now these are just a few books i mean imagine how much more i've learned from other things right so um, the power of now from eckhart Tolle. what a beautiful book that was way back in the day you know 2007 or 8 or something when i picked it up um, and simply inviting you to once again consider the way that you think is suffering uh, inherent to the experience or is it a perception that you have you know and that if you become present in the now is there really such a, a thing as suffering or is there just this moment and what do we need to undertake in this moment what does this moment require from us because that is the reality that we live in every day it never changes although sometimes it seems to change when our mind moves into the polarity or the duality of what we refer to as time past uh, and future now of course there were other books divine mother from yvonne de la Flore. now that was an incredible contribution that she made what a beautiful um, connection that she made invitation to love goes down in history in my history as the most profound book that i have ever read not at all because of the words that went with it and i don't know if uh, anyone else would get the same experience but because that this is a communication from mahavta sri babaji nagaraj who i've talked about uh, so just to say how she creates the book she goes into meditation to a deep trance state and the way the automatic writing takes place is that babaji through psychokinesis takes control of her body her hand and writes out the book in other words babaji wrote the book yvonne was the uh, instrument we could say now because he's so intimately involved his energy is as a vibration emanates through the page so that when i picked up this book and started reading my god there was there was such an explosion of love in my heart that it literally took the wind out of my lungs and you know i was forced on various occasions into the fetal position because of the intensity of love that i was feeling and that was the first time that i really come to understand um what divine love is that a being that could have that much uh, profound power that even through the words on a book that you could immediately create a connection non-locally with this being and that they would they would immediately have that connection with you and that even being in the presence of their focus that would be the impact that the heart would explode like a sun and that you would have waves of love moving through you and tears streaming through your eyes and my girlfriend at the time um she thought i was going crazy because um, i probably was because 
I, I'd be out, you know, would be reading, and you know, I was being the crazy spiritual person on the crazy spiritual journey. And I'd pick up the book and I'd open it and then immediately the tears would stream down my face. And these are called bhakti tears, by example, uh, for uh, to explain that. And she would look at me like, you've lost it. And it's like, sorry, but you just, you know, you've got to, you've got to experience this to get this. But it got to the point um, where I would like be almost afraid of the book, you know, walk out from the corner of the door, glance around the corner and catch sight of the book and now you know, I'm bursting into tears and I don't really perceive myself as a, a wimp <laughs> I've always perceived myself as quite a masculine sort of you know tough guy if you, if you like um, you know I've, I've got a national <laughs> national uh, record in New Zealand in the black belt category of Taekwondo I mean there are about 30, uh, 50 ring fights in various fields of martial arts and you could say karate, kickboxing, uh, even kendo, um, and do. There's a few different styles, um, but yeah. Anyway, to cut that short, so I'm I'm used to acting tough. Meanwhile, you know, I, I'm bursting into tears because I'm looking at a book about love. So yeah, it's a humbling experience, isn't it? But this was another book that was very profound. And let me just quickly. Oh, well, look at the. I'm going over. Surprise, surprise. I'm not very good with. Time am I, but you know, just bear with me if you'd like to me to continue. And it's interesting to you. Unplug your mind by Yvonne de la Flor. Now, um, yeah, I'll, I'll share your experience about this one just because it was very profound. Uh, and that Yvonne at this time, because I was in close con association and connection with her, she had taught me and assisted me in a way that I would explain shortly. But um, she knew that I was sensitive, of course, and so that she sent through the manuscript to this book uh unplug your mind right and she sent she emailed it through as a word document and i was like wow she she must really trust me she sent me through the manuscript of the word document like i could edit it and etc but anyway what she wanted me to do was to simply add um sorry read over the manuscript and add my testimonial and i sort of felt wrong i'm really privileged like well, I'm, like must be spiritual or something she's asking for my testimonial but anyway the joke's on me i went to open the um the book as it were so it's a word document and you know how when there's a book with a number of pages it has to take a while to load at least on the older computers so i went to the bar on the side of the the word uh, program and pulled the bar down so you know i can load the pages a bit quicker so anyway brrr, it spins through the pages and then the first page I see is titled uh, Lord Krishna. Oh my God, like I was not ready for that. It, again, boom, an explosion of love. And it was the same love that I felt um, with the Babaji connection. Uh, Lord Krishna, of course, if you are familiar with the, the Hare Krishna, is said to be the supreme personality of the Godhood, right? So anyway, this supreme personality is making itself known to me. And again, my heart like exploding. Um, I'm pushed over into the fetal position, uh, you know, in waves of love as my body is swaying, almost like I'm in some sort of warm bath. My, I mean, I, my eyes were so wide open that I was like, oh my God. So it took me a while to recover. Anyway, so I read the communication from Lord Krishna likewise. What Yvonne has done has, I mean, she, she's a beautiful channel. She's an incredibly clear channel. Um, I, I've had disagreements with Yvonne in the past. I will say, just to be honest, um, but I, I will never uh, ever take away from her her amazing capacity to channel information from these ascended masters. So. Um, how many messages are there in that book? It doesn't say on the front. I think it's 108, though. No, it's not. 108 reminders. Maybe it is. But there are a number of messages from the Ascended Realms in there. And as I went through this book, I'm like some sort of <clears throat> energetic victim or something at this point, where I'm going through and I'm sampling every single uh, master. And, and the energy field is touching me in the you know in the only unique way that they are expressing i suppose it's like it's their energy signature so uh yeah what a crazy 
crazy weekend that was. And um, I ended up saying when I wrote back my testimonial to her, I said, this is not a book. This is, initi this is an initiation <laughs> because I was trying to read through these messages and I'm absorbing. They're like DNA activations, energy transmissions, every communication, which are, of course, prophetic, but sometimes don't even mean anything, but you get hit with it. And as I'm going over the weekend, like just my life is just spiraling out of control because of all the chaos that's happening in my energy field. Um, so one of the things that coordinated on that as I was reading over these pages, it just so happened that Grandmaster Yang, and I'll, I'll get to him shortly, was down for the weekend. And so he, here's this master, right? He's a grandmaster, wielding the violet flame, which we have tangible evidence of. He's come in for a class. He's there to genetically activate my brain and help me understand how to wield this energy. And he just happens to mention that an advanced race had landed when he was in Beijing last and given him energies to assist humanity. And that also the Himalayan masters has given him a special energy to assist with the regeneration of the genetic code of humanity. And I'm like, meanwhile, I'm reading this book from ascended masters. These are immortal throughout time. Every name that you've heard throughout history has something to say. My life's going crazy. I've got this violet power weeding grandmaster who says that an advanced race has landed, I would have to assume that means a UFO grounded themselves and if communicated with them and gave me energy. And then the, the monks from the Himalayan mountain range have also given them the same. So just imagine, you know, this weekend, this is crazy weekend that I went through. So I thought I'd you know, remind that. Oh, the sacred messages from the parents of the earth. Um, <laughs> so look, I'm not going to detail everything, but that's another very profound book and one connection I got that was with Swami uh, Amarananda, Phil LaHaye. He, he gave me this profound teaching, uh, Descent of the Avatar Realm on 3D, 21 precepts. So these are things that we need to ultimately embody. If you want to embody, and look at that, he's um, very kindly put co-sponsored by Jake Soul on the front there, because uh, I asked him, I said, uh, Amar, this teaching is, is just the most concise and profound teaching that I've ever come across, like you, you know, you're reading through these concepts that seem simple, and yet, you know, you really have to self reflect and say, wow, I'm such a long way from that. And you feel humbled and inspired. And, and so I'm still embodying that. And hopefully, at some point, uh, Sri Babaji will allow me to um, share that with the rest. And if I don't reach a sufficient level of awareness, I'm sure that won't be allowed. He has a way of being able to control these things, um, not in a tyrannical way, but it's his teaching, right? So uh, Babaji dictated those 21 precepts. Um, but moving on, the Talos series, I thought deserved to mention the Lemurians from underneath Mount Shasta that existed a fifth plus dimensional frequency. There were three books. I love that. The Seven Sacred Flames. And I'm, yeah, I'm just going to skip through this. Again, I'm going to Keep going because we're time, right? The time. Uh, the great master, that was Toby Alexander. Again, Babaji worked directly with him. He's a disciple of Babaji to teach him how to embody these precepts. You can access this book. Go online, look for it. It's another one of these volumes that you just read through going, oh my God, I'm so far from this level of self-perfection, per uh, perfection, right? Uh, mentored by Mahavtao, another one that I didn't have put here. Uh, he trained me in various ways but among them the golden dna activation certified facilitator training uh dna masters activation training um energy field quantum field healing and mastery he trained me it was very powerful that's grandmaster yang working with a violet flame uh, non-locally he trained me over many many years since 2006 uh like personally mentored me Always, he would call me up at times and just start talking to me about what was happening in my life, though I'd never said anything or texted him. He just knew, uh, he, you know, this is where he's at in various seminars, many, many seminars that I've done of him, special programs, the Planetary Power Connection. I uh, was in China with him once on retreat, and, I mean, this was, again, one of these incredibly profound experiences I was in the third eye temple and you know i 
I put this down to Quan Yin basically giving me this gift of vibrational power. I was standing there practicing the energy as it normally would, was channeling like a river of light through from the earth, like the local feng, feng shui. I'd love to talk more about that, what it's like there, particularly in Guilin, but um, wow, you know, at, at the Third Eye Temple, all of a sudden, my legs started to vibrate as if they were um, like a guitar string, like literally vibrating. And anyone that comes to my classes, they'll know that to that to this day, um, my body just begins to vibrate as the energy picks up because that vibrational frequency, which is of course coming from beyond the primal light fields, that that fundamental frequency that organizes, you know, like the plate matter into form which is is how the dna is regenerated so this power was given to me and i'm assuming you know kuan yin is just a an archetypal uh, name associated with the divine mother the divine feminine i just see that was a gift but that was another profound experience and so i'm not going to go more into that but of course there was many more experiences that ultimately gave me this understanding of what is true and what is real and that my willingness to go through and follow my intuition and go through those experiences no matter how difficult or inconvenient it was what gave me that experience of authenticity and truth so that i can speak from experience and not just as a philosopher right so that my shortcut here number one is get outside your comfort zone don't follow only the teachings that you feel comfortable with right Follow the teaching that you know deeply inside of you, that is the way, you know, and you know what, that might mean that your whole life gets tipped side, upside down, and that has never bothered me, and my life has been tipped side down uh, many times before, and can you see how, how am I going to sell this to anyone, and be an effective salesman, I'm not, <laughs> because who wants their life tipped upside down, but you know what, do you want a life that is false and that is on the surface of your being? Or are you willing to sacrifice that so that you can have a deeper experience and to summon forth from the Godhood, uh, Godhead, as it were, that soul covenant through which you can contribute to humanity from the depths of your being, who you are, your greatest contribution? I say the later, you know. So shortcut number two, do not identify with anything. So as many things that I just outlined, I don't identify with any of it. It is, it is information. It is the field of energy. It is all, we could say, Divine Mother uh, coaching me. And that through the field of energy and all of the offerings that arise, I don't need to defend any of it and I don't need to because the truth needs no defense. If anyone says anything derogatory, I don't need to, you know, puff my chest up. They can have their opinion, you know, um, and I don't need to justify it to anyone. I've just explained my experience. That's what it is. And um, nothing can change that. So I, I get that strength and certainty through not identifying with it and yet understanding and respecting the inherent value of it as well, right? So pathway number four. Now these next couple, uh, it's they're going to go through reasonably quickly, right? Um, we've been through most of the webinar. Apologies once again for going over. Um, I do these webinars more so for the people that will see them afterwards, not to disrespect anyone on the webinar, but you know I'll I'll put up this one as well, and people can learn from this. So the information will be there over time. Now shortcut tip. So plan, uh, pathway number four, alignment, okay? And shortcut number one with this is, well, if you can imagine, if you're trying to achieve alignment with, of, of course, associated in initial stages with activating not only your fourth DNA strain, but your fifth DNA strain, but your sixth DNA strain, in particular to allow the th sixth dimensional current into your body and your third eye, as it were, to activate, which is otherwise known as your soul center, well, that is only going to happen if you come into alignment with your soul. So what does that mean? You know, naturally, as you come into alignment with your soul, well, your soul 
is in natural alignment with the spirit, right? So your spirit center will open up, which will be the conduit through which you can move into that higher connection and those higher levels of awareness. So the shortcut associated with coming into alignment with your soul is to take immediate, unresisted action on that which you know you should be doing. Now, isn't this simple? And isn't it so uh, profoundly simple and yet so profoundly challenging? Because don't you know what you need to do? Every day, isn't it? Every day you know what to do. And every day you can notice when you didn't follow <clears throat> exactly what you know you needed to do. Isn't it? Hands up. Hands up who doesn't follow the inner voice. <clears throat> Damn, I've run out of water. Getting a little bit dry off the voice here from all this talking. <clears throat> So yeah, um, in that moment that we don't align, what do we know? We know that we just had a soul rebellion. We just had a tanty, okay? But when we come into that soul resonance, we will not have a resistance within us. Now, this is the key to everything. You know, this is such a powerful key because when you don't have resistance, that means that you are embracing what is, aren't you? In other words, if you're not rejecting something, then you're not going to go into conflict. You're not going to go into disturbance and you're not going to go into discord because you are inviting what is arriving. You know that you are learning from it. You are saying, bring it on. In other words, you are acknowledging that life and the design inherent to it, this multidimensional structure through which consciousness and energy moves up the multidimensional scale called evolution is perfect. Right, so that if we understand that it's perfect, there's nothing to complain about. Bye bye goes the victim, doesn't it? That requires uh, a high degree of spiritual maturity, doesn't it? Here's the key word, isn't it? Surrender. You're no longer at war with life. You embrace it as it is. Now, that's going to come and slap you in the face sometimes, isn't it? But hey, um, it's all part of the deal. It's all part of the game. Now, pathway number five, we're almost here, team at the end, is just to to keep humility and to keep a willingness to seek help. You know, if you if you don't have that, if you want to rush out straight away and think that you know everything, um, which is very typical of the ego, by the way, you'll find that well, you know, you've you've done this uh, metaphorical thing of immediately filling your cup, right? The, the Buddhists talk about emptying your, your cup, like, you know, you've filled up your teacup, once it's full, you can't fit any more tea, right? Whereas if you empty it, well, you can fit more tea. In other words, you're going to stop learning the moment that you think, you really think you know a lot. And um, as much as I've talked about today, I don't, <laughs> I don't perceive that I know a lot. It's, it's more so that there's just a little bit of information that I've gathered along the way. And I'm just sharing that from my memory while well, intrinsically being aware that, you know, I, I know barely anything. Um, imagine all of the high levels of awareness that are beyond me right now. And I'm yet to experience. So really, I know nothing compared to that. There's just a few little details that I'm sharing. So that's a very helpful way to stay. And, um, you know, all of these things that um, it's just, it's just a little bit of information, isn't it? It's just a little bit of information. So that if we can remain in that space of humility, here's the shortcut to is don't race to teach. Remain the student. And of course, as we start, and I'm not speaking to, the, to we could say, beginners, as it were here. I'm, I'm aware of that. And you'll be able to well relate that you want to go out straight away. And you've learned something new. And you want to be proud. And you want to, you want to teach it. But... You know, at least in a professional sense, I would encourage people to take off the accelerator. Um, be willing to learn, but not only learn philosophically, but to really integrate these experiences like I have been explaining, you know, so that you can talk from that place of deep inner knowing and not just from, I'm going to remember what the book said, sort of thing, the academic thing, right? So um, that being said, I'm going to move on to this golden opportunity. I'm not going to go on for a long time here. I'm just going to speak to it straight away. As I mentioned, I'm not a sales person, um, so I don't do sales. 
I'm just going to let you know what I have. As I mentioned, as a certified Golden DNA Activation Facilitator, I haven't offered these for a long time, uh, but I'm qualified and capable of... Um, there are others, of course, as well. I'm not too sure. I can only speak to myself. I know that I can capably facilitate this. There are others that can facilitate this as well. Um, but this is something that I can help people with. And to give a little bit more information to this, uh, if, if I can, and now I have to go into speculation because it's well beyond my uh, area of understanding, we could say, but that if we at least philosophically understand that this is the time matrix, here's the energy matrix, and here's the source of consciousness, it's my understanding that this is how this activation came about. Uh, Sri Mahavda Babaji Nagaraj saw that humanity was struggling during this time, and that he went um, all the way up, he ascended. Now, this is called uh, magnetic accretion, by the way, where you are upfolding your consciousness from body, boof, to the soul body, boof, to this oversight, to the avatar, to the rishi self, to the vibratory uh, wavelength, back to the consciousness of the one that we are, that he is, but he knows it. <laughs> But that when you are in the consciousness of the one, the source of life and all of creation, well, who's heard of the term multiverse? Um, because apparently, and I go, I admit it, this is a philosophy for me, there is not just one universe. Surprise, surprise, I'm perfectly willing to accept that. But that he went to the source of consciousness and ultimately petitioned, and this is where it gets really abstract, within the consciousness of the one, we could do with a little bit of help here. Uh, humanity's getting crazy. And so that he went to a light universe that had been created. Uh, now this is within the multiverse, within the cosmos is another way to say it. There are different universes and some universes, they don't have all of these levels of polarization. In other words, there's not good and bad. There's not bad guys. There is not Anunnaki and reptilians coming to get us and interfere in our evolution, there are only fields and density levels existing in perfect harmony. So that those are called light universes, right? And so that everything is unfolding perfectly. Now, to an extent, that might seem a little bit boring, because you can't, you know, go off and have, there's no free will, of course. But don't think that that means that things are bad. Just imagine, and now this is what it's like if everyone's attuned to the Christ consciousness. Everybody expresses themselves in perfect unity, in perfect relation with each other. That's called divine right order. At the perfect time, that's called divine right timing. So that creation moves forward and evolves in the perfect way that the highest level of joy and experience and fulfillment is experienced by all elements or facets of consciousness or, you know, individuated, as it were, forms within that field can take place. So anyway, Babaji went to the light universe called the absolute harmonic universe where this understanding is there and said, look, you know, what can you do for us? Can you help? And um, it's these are not the only beings that are helping. Um, I referred to Corey Good. Initially, he talks about the sphere beings, doesn't he? The blue sphere being alliance. Now, these beings are the golden ones from the absolute harmonic universe and remember how i talked about unplug your mind so if you want to learn more about these beings there's a number of messages from these be beings in that book right but ultimately what these beings came back and did is said look what we'll do is that we will sponsor the earth's ascension the light universe the absolute harmonic universe by creating portals through which human consciousness can correct, uh, connect directly with the absolute harmonic universe and download the templates into the DNA from before the fall took place. In other words, these are the templates of the DNA that are not dysfunctional and that these codes, we could say, are codes through which the DNA can be regenerated to the original divine function. Okay, so that's how this Golden DNA activation was brought into manifestation through the beauty, uh, beautiful service of Edvon Delaflor, as I mentioned, that amazing channel, brought through the information and protocol and trained a number of facilitators. So for the next eight weeks or so, I'm going to be 
uh, helping people through this process. Uh, eight weeks, although it's three sessions, so that means that we'll wait two weeks because I'm going to give people a bit more time to consider this if they want to be part of it. Um, others that are on the webinar currently, perception, uh, they can perceive if this is going to be something they want to be part of. And in two weeks, we're going to get started with this. And then every two weeks, we will activate three additional codes for the golden DNA activation. So just to clarify, this is not the master's DNA activation that I've done previously, and that which is part of the lightning path, right? This is a different one. Um, yeah, I've been guided to do this now, uh, for whatever reason, right? And so what the investment for this is, is 432, uh, that's Australian dollars. Again, I'm not a salesman. I'm not going to try and make some special bargain and say, if you do it on this webinar, then sign up straight away. You get this and blah, blah, blah. No, that's that's how much it is. You know, if you want to play that game, you know, go elsewhere. I'm just letting you know what this is. Uh, if you are still on the webinar to this point and you understand what I've been talking about, then you'll understand the value of this. And it's not that it has a monetary value. It's a priceless thing. And in saying that, I am not like some avatar figure messiah that can come along and rescue anyone and to ascend them into the absolute harmonic realms. This is your duty. This is your job, right? What I can do as a facilitator is open up the doorway for that portal to take place. And if you want to walk through it, through your sincere heart, then you will. So you know, another option that you can take is yeah, either pay 432 and I'll give you the link shortly or um, you can pay every couple of weeks the 144 option if you want that less. If you've been impacted by this COVID uh, global economic collapse drama, then just be sincere um, and honest with me. I'll trust you and we might be able to do, you know, a reduced amount. Um, just have integrity with that. It's already that's not very much for what's being offered, but I'm um, just have integrity. Let me know. I'm certainly willing to create something that's within people's reach. And of course, perhaps even a payment plan or something. I'll, I'll trust you to continue with the payment. So if you want to be part of that, then let me know. I'm just messaging through to everyone now. There's a, a link there that you can go to and you can either invest right up there, the full 32 if you want to, or 144. You can do the first one, then wait a bit etc but that's what we're going to be doing for the next eight weeks and um yeah so time time someone's asking a good question so we'll move into some q a related to that now i'll just move on because that's that's the next thing already already we've got questions and answers coming up but so yeah what a great question so what is the difference between the golden dna activation and the master's dna activation Okay, so um, now the difference between those two, I'm told by uh, Toby Alexander, who was the one that was instructed, requested by Sri Babaji Mahavata Babaji Nagaraj to give these trainings. He's the only one on the earth that was allowed to give this. Yvonne Four was the channel through which this energy and portal was provided. They worked as a team of masculine and feminine to organize this. And that they said that the master's DNA activation was specific to the indigo children on the planet. So these are the people that are, uh, identify as star children, the 144,000 star children that have incarnated allegedly under the surface of the planet to raise the planetary frequency so that we can ultimately uh, move through this planetary ascension how they do that as a side note is that as the indigo children activate from they come in with six strands active so they come in with a soul active from a childhood they will know they will have this deeper knowing and that they will naturally move onto their soul path um, that was for them right so that they can rapidly assemble their dna and come in to do their mission now the golden dna activation that's from a completely different universe altogether you know the the indigo children, though they are ascended masters, uh, types types one, two, and three, they are from this universe. So they have the most experience in this universe, but the golden light beings, they are holding the sponsorship of the DNA template 
as it was before the fall in consciousness. In other words, when we existed as golden beings, as avatars, before it even descended into matter, and all hell broke loose, as it were. So that's the difference, right? So that means anyone can take on that. Anyone can assimilate that frequency into their DNA. And if you want to do the work, like I mentioned, the skill of light accretion is essential. I would say if you if you think that you're going to do this DNA activation and then voila, it's done for you, don't do it. Because at best you will get, you know, an elevation and energy, feel all of a sudden a lot more expanded and aware, and then plant back down. Because why? Because it's like someone opening a door and the most beautiful playground is on the outside in the world, and yet you look out the door and go back to the couch, sit down and start playing PlayStation, go, nah, I can't be bothered. You know, so that's that's what it's like. No one, no one can save you but yourself. So people can help along the way. And I'm someone that is certainly in a position to help given the enormous amount of help that I've received, you know. So um, has anyone else got any other questions in relation to that? Otherwise, <clears throat> I'm just checking. Getting pretty thirsty. Man, we've gone way over. So, again, I'm sorry about that. Um, that's just the way it went, right? So, the question, how do I know if I'm an indigo or a non-indigo? <clears throat> well, actually, there's a way in which you can uh, tune into your higher self and simply ask the question through reading a palm energy signature where energy flows through the hand, either it flows forward or it doesn't, it flows backwards. So you can get kind of like a yes, no response from your higher self. That's, uh, that's, a, te that's a skill that we learn in the lightning path. And it's also a critical skill associated with learning to do your own energy field clearings, which is, of course, something that I, I teach in the lightning path as well as, yeah, learning to clear your own energy, energy field and this is how you can facilitate quantum healings non-locally as well for other people. That's a great skill. But you can also tune into your higher self and receive like a more tangible feedback than just sort of waiting there um, for you know a message from <laughs> some intangible space within your own head. So yeah, that's something that we can learn about. Uh, we'll do that if you like as we move through the activations. And it's a matter of becoming attuned to your energy body so that you can feel that you need a sensitivity. That's the only challenges that you need to yeah have that level of sensitivity so what happens if the indigo children do the golden DNA activation well it's the way i see it um is that you know we exist in the frequencies of this universe if we can go to a perfect universe and take in a golden wavelength frequency which has historically been associated with the christ mind that's why the golden flame of wisdom, of course, is associated with the Christ mind. Then, well, we don't want to do that. <laughs> and if you have, you know, these uncountable amount of golden beings that exist, yeah, you're saying, yeah, Super Saiyan. I mean, where did the idea come from? You know, Super Saiyan with these golden uh, hair pieces. <laughs> Now, if you've got these sorts of beings that are offering their help and all that you require to do is participate, to open your heart. And in saying that, um, just to be clear, participating in the Golden DNA activation through me does not mean that you are going to have this option available to you. I'm just being completely clear and honest with you because it's not about me. It's about you. If you participate in this activation with an open heart and with a fully surrendered consciousness of you're going to jump off the cliff and land in golden arms you know in other words there is not one bit of resistance within you only a 100 percent yes i'm in then it will happen okay so that when you commit to this um from the moment you commit and that doesn't even have to be from the moment you make a payment. It will be from the moment that you commit in your heart and in your mind and you know that you're going to be part of this. Watch what happens in your life. First of all, 
notice what happens within your own state of being because this immense wave of peace will come over you because from the higher self all the way up to your personality self or from wherever your consciousness currently is you will have this instinctive awareness that all will be well right and once again i want to remind you i'm not identifying with that i'm not associated with that it's about you it's about your own commitment i am simply facilitating this right i just want to be clear about that i'm not gonna um, sit in the position of, of guru here i'm a facilitator the options there so do we have um having said that i'm a capable facilitator you'll feel the energy transmission as we move through this um do we have any further questions before we close up i know it's been intense it's been a an onslaught hasn't it been an onslaught so um perhaps What's this done by chance? It's not done with a fully open heart. Once the heart, once, once the heart is fully open, will it facilitate at a later date? By that I mean due to ancient trauma. <clears throat> well, I would expect, um, yeah, if you're thinking that this is it's going to be blocked by trauma, no, it's not going to be blocked by trauma, because think about it for a moment. What is trauma? Trauma is something that you've experienced in time, isn't it? So that. To have experienced trauma, time would have to exist. Now, I don't know how we can get our head around this, but when you're from an absolute harmonic universe, <laughs> when you are existing in unity consciousness, time as we know it doesn't exist. Everything's happening now, and yet Mahavata Babaji is moving through the space-time coordinates with us. So it's a paradox. I don't know how that works. But it works. <laughs> um, another example of that, for example, would be that when Swami Vivekananda um, had a student come to him when he came to America and he said, be my guru. He said, no, I cannot be your guru. Your guru will come and he will give you a silver cup. Meanwhile, I think it was something like 40 years later, after this guy has met Paramahansa Yogananda um, and been a disciple for a long time, finally, he gave him the silver cup so it's like wow you know what is time it, it, it rises a question about fate predestination free will it, this is where it really gets interesting but let's not go into that for now so in other words your trauma will be dissolved into the timeless space through which it doesn't exist you will become the all mind right now, how does the all mind exist in time and how can trauma exist if you haven't moved through time if that makes sense so in other words by restoring your genetic code to the golden wavelength all trauma is healed that'll be a progressive place uh process it won't happen all at once because god you don't want it to it's like a monsoon think about that weekend that i told you about well i didn't even tell you the details you know shit gets crazy <laughs> but um Having said that, I'm sure that your ears are weary. Uh, you've heard enough. I think I need to take a break <laughs> from speaking. But I'll, I'll close it from there at this point. Um, if you've got any other questions, you're welcome to write in. I'll reply. Thank you so much for your attention and presence today. You've been an integral part of it. And I shall look forward to being in contact with you in the near future. Alright, much love to you all, and Godspeed until then.